you see you might see that it is uh, glowing like really bright it is it is like half the brightness of the original because half the power is only being fed to the bulb but still it is a pretty good demonstration and good for college projects and useful hi guys this what you see is a microwave plate motor and it can produce up to 220 volts easily generating electricity with these is really easy all you have to do is connect this crank on the shaft of the synchronous motor and then it is going to produce 220 volts on these two terminals cool right so simple cranking and the higher the rotation rpm the more will be the output voltage and power so amazing and easy i got shocked now the output voltage was very high even though the rpm was so low why is that let's look inside it well guys the bad news is that i was trying to open it but unfortunately i think i broke it that's the gearbox inside because of which the rpm was very high even though i was rotating at such a low rpm and that is why i got electric shock you see so many gears it's a reducer gear motor but the motor got damaged well how to proceed further luckily i have another piece so no worries and these are really cheap okay microwave plate motors they are really cheap available readily in the market let's open it further that's the thick and main gear final driving shaft and after that there are so many gears inside here you will understand these projections that you see these are going to act as poles to the coil and this is the magnetic rotor inside and here is the clip it's sticking it so this is the magnet and inside this you will see around four poles only four poles are there and the remaining four poles are on these this one this one this one and this one and these go to the empty slots and this is the winding so i've removed the coil you can see here the coil inside so thin copper wire has been used with so many number of turns and only two wires are coming out of it making it a solenoid and this what you see is the body that contains four of the eight poles so what happens is when this magnet is like this so this is north this is south and again this is north this is south this empty space is north this pole is south empty space north and this pole is south so this entire metal piece becomes north let's assume it if uh, this piece of the magnet is north and these poles will go to the empty space here so they all will become south this way it is going to convert a rotary magnet into a linear magnet just like it is going inside and coming out at a very high rpm actually the problem is that uh, they needed a uh, rotary motion instead of a linear motion it is much easier and also not shaky uh, it is pretty good so understand it this way that the coil goes inside like this and let's assume the part of the magnet that is facing the metal poles is north so at present the lower portion of the coil is north and there are no poles for the upper portion and initially the upper portion was also connected somewhat like this then the upper portion of this coil will also become south then it will be a complete linear motion north south and when this magnet rotates then upper one becomes south and the lower one becomes north and this happens really quickly because of which this solenoid keeps on getting changed polarity north south north south north south and thus it uh, generates electricity because of the changing magnetic poles working of a synchronous motor is really simple this is a synchronous motor with a clip attached to the shaft and here we have a 220 volts ac source so all we got to do is bend the terminals and place them in the socket and then turn the switch on 
and uh, this is very dangerous because it is 220 volts supply okay yeah you see it is running at a very low rpm well guys i would like to see if it can shock me the entire outside body of this motor is metallic because the coil was like wound on a plastic material it was no way in contact with the body but sometimes it still happens okay oh <laughs> it is shocking me <laughs> once again ah not this time huh ah, it's not shocking me anymore yeah i don't know why is that at the first time it shocked me ah uh, you see i'm touching it continuously but there is a lot of vibration so guys here uh, this is connected to the shaft of the motor and multimeter pins have been connected to the motor terminals here as you can see and now i'm going to run this motor with this and you can see the display over here as high as 483 volts ac now guys let's connect this 220 volts 100 watts bulb to this generator and see it glow fully bright what am i doing well of course it would not work this is 100 watts and this is only 5 watts that would be really stupid and it's not like i'm making free energy video over here but now i'm going to connect an even bigger power 200 watts LED panel Light has been connected to the generator now let's rotate the shaft Pretty good right Now guys why is it that i said that this 100 watts bulb is not going to glow but this 200 LED panel is glowing that is because this has a circuit installed because of which when the power coming to the led panel is low then the led panel will glow but it is going to be like really dim but still visible which is not the case with this 100 watts bulb now guys instead of this big 200 watts panel if we just try this 5 watts led bulb okay then because the ratings are identical 5 watts and 5 watts this should glow pretty good So let's try that. Okay. <laughs> you see? Yeah, it's glowing. Now let's turn off the lights and then see. You see that it is glowing really bright. Such a small motor and still it is glowing this 5 watts LED bulb so bright. you might see in the camera that the brightness is really high but that is not the case in reality because i am seeing it here right now you see you might see that it is glowing like really bright it is it is like half the brightness of the original because half the power is only being fed to the bulb but still it is a pretty good demonstration and good for college projects and useful try not to go pretty strong on this motor because the gears are of plastic or uh, nylon so they are going to break easily and then you might just damage your entire project so guys with that i'm finishing off the video part 1 video on synchronous motors being used as generators your hidden question for today is what was the main reason in my previous video because of which i could turn my angle grinder into a self excited generator so see you in the next video bye bye